Hey guys, I'm CNH Small in here back again for another quick video here for you. We had a uh, customer's machine over here earlier this week here and uh, they were having problems with their Husqvarna here specifically for that. This is a uh, Husqvarna string trimmer with the curved shaft here specifically for that. That's This, this is their like entry level machine here. This one does not have all the uh, bells and whistles for the higher end machines right here specifically. So this is your typical small curved shaft Husqvarna homeowners uh, you know, light uh, duty only machine. I'll give you the model number here as well too. Let me get the thing out in the back here so you can flip it around. This one has the Husqvarna 128CD engine on here with the E-Tech. As the badge has it right down here, E-Tech engine 128CD. And you also have the other information on the bottom of the machine for reference points for like your emissions and controls and stuff like that so you have all your uh, information you have two tags you have one down here with the barcode that one says that the uh, SKU number right here and also the mall number as well too any other tag on the other side right here has the information for the uh, EPA mandates for the uh, emissions compliance period and stuff like that so that has all the uh, goodies right there for your uh, specific uh, model number and type and stuff like that guys so uh, the reason a customer brought us over or, or brought this machine to us was because uh, the machine wouldn't start and uh, these machines right here uh, typically uh, the first thing we have to check on them over here so whenever you're, you're, you're doing a basic check of the machine always take the exhaust um, side off on your verify the muffler is not clogged or plugged up on them and they do have a spark arrestor on the actual muffler over here as well too let me see if I can show you that right here, but it does, you, can, you can see it down inside. It does have a spark arrestor down inside here, and you want to verify the spark arrestor is clean or possibly plugged up right there for that because if you have a no-start situation, uh, the spark arrestor can become totally clogged, and you need to have that thing verified first to uh, make sure it's okay. And then the second thing is uh, you have the muffler off, make sure the ports are clean, Make sure the um, you don't have any kind of scoring down so the cylinder wall and stuff like that as well too. You have to check on the exhaust and also on the other side, the intake side as well too, while you're shining with some kind of flashlight straight through the actual piston board on side for verification that it is indeed in good shape. And you also want to do a compression test on the machine. Uh, this one right here hit a compression of about 100, I think 120, I think I wrote on the tag here. So hit about 120 uh, PSI in the engine right here. So the engine is still mechanically sound. So we told him to go ahead and have, the, have it repaired because he was on the fence about getting the thing repaired or not. And um, I basically told him, your engine is in is in you know functional shape. Your your crank's not uh, you know loose or you know bent or broke or anything else like that. You have a good compression, and uh, the cylinder's nice and tight on the actual crank as well too. Because uh, two strokes uh, sometimes they can have the cylinder bore come loose on there. It, it can be like rocking back and forth down inside, and it's not going to seal right. Everything looks good on this guy's engine. We did install the uh, new uh, new carb, new spark plug on this one. Let me flip it around and show you that. Got a new carb down inside here. Also got a new, uh, let me see here, intake gasket. I'm going to put a new intake gasket on here. Uh, the air filter looks relatively okay. We did put the old air filter back inside there. New carbs on the machine, functioning great. Uh, we also put a new fuel line down inside as well. You can, you can see the new fuel line down inside, right? It's right down inside. Let me see if I get a better shot. Sorry about the lighting out here, but. Uh, there is new fuel line on the machine down inside there. We had to put uh, the uh, new um, new fuel filter in here as well too. So we got a whole fresh tank of gas laying here right now. And uh, it's fill up all the way to the top because I typically like to leave my machine sit overnight for about 24 hours and uh, verify it's gonna not gonna leak or anything else like that. So new, uh, new fuel lines, new fuel filter, cleaning out the tank, uh, new carb assembly do intake uh, gasket. You always have to replace these intake gaskets because sometimes they can stick on a carb and when they stick on a carb, they tend to pull themselves apart whenever you take the carb off there. So it's always advisable to install a new intake gasket on your machine when you're doing the fuel system overhaul. And we also put a new spark plug in here, as I said before. So we'll go ahead and fire this thing up right here and you can see how it's running right now from guys. So hold on guys, wipe up my camera down here real quick. Okay, we're back here again. Got the machine running right now. Let me go ahead and gun it up here for you. 
put it in the grass a little bit. That thing's still a little cold out here. I just got done starting up. It, it had been sitting overnight right there for that. So. Everything's working good on here. The bump head down there is spinning fine. Make sure it stops. There we go. It's stopping. So it should not be spinning over while the machine is idling. So it looks like it's working okay for us. Sounds good. Nice, got a nice smooth idle. Doesn't have any kind of a weird loping or you know knocking or anything else like that. So it's ready to go back to the customer, and we'll go ahead and shut it off here. There we go. Put the air filter back on here as well too, so I can do that. So we'll go ahead and put the air filter back in the machine. Nope. Let me flip it around. There we go. Get out of the way there. Okay. Line that up good. And uh, if, any, if anybody wants the information about the machine here, I'll put a uh, link at the bottom of the page where uh, you can get your uh, carb information for that and also the uh, spark plug type as well too because uh, some people are probably ask me what kind of carb you're going to put on here. So I'll put a direct link. Because typically I buy a lot of my parts off of eBay, my genuine uh, OEM parts for the machines out there for that simply because it's a lot cheaper to uh, buy it on eBay in bulk quantity because typically I buy maybe carbs online for maybe about uh, maybe five or ten carbs at a time for some machines out there and it's simply more economical to buy in a uh, vast quantity rather than it's like buying in one individual carb for the machine. So we'll go ahead and put the um, link at the bottom of the page for the uh, spark plug which is a BPMR4A and also the carb assembly for this uh, specific mall number as well too. This is the Husqvarna 128 CD as the name has it down right here. 128 CD with the E-Tech engine on here. And I'll go ahead and put the link at the bottom of the page for the carb and the spark plug. I do strongly advise and recommend using only, only a OEM carb. I say that because I had in the past where people would bring me uh, Chinese knockoff carbs for like 10 or 15 bucks and, and the carb simply would not work. It would start leaking or they had a problem where the carb would not idle or rev up correctly. And uh, you get what you basically pay for. If you want a carb that ain't going to work right, go ahead and go on eBay and buy a $10 carb. If you want a carb that's going to work correctly, go online and buy the correct OEM spec carb from the manufacturer, guys. So anybody has any comments, questions, whatnot, feel free to uh, drop me a message here. And I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible about this Husqvarna 128 CD machine, guys. I'll see you. Have a nice day.